they wrapped all of my stuff in jello. And they moved my room around. I don't care what you guys do. Don't touch my. You are lucky. I really do not have the time or the mood to deal with you right now, so you're gonna have to call back. Actually, sir, I think this idea will give you the pick-me-up that you need. How? Because I feel like this game will produce a lot of laughs and enjoyment. Oh, it's a jokey joke game? Well, I don't care about making gamers laugh right now. Oh, oh no, no, no. See, the laughs are for us. Go on. Well, see, I have an idea for a game that's similar to the Dark Souls games. Oh, Dark Souls? Why didn't you just say so? Watching people struggle in that game is one of my favorite pastimes. <laughs> Me too. So what's this one? It's called Bloodborne. Bloodborne, I like it. Go. Okay, sir, I'm gonna be pretty honest. This game is pretty much like all over the place. I mean, it bounces around like crazy. You'll have no idea what's going on until about three quarters of the way in, and even then, there are still more questions than there are answers. Well, if the story is confusing, what would make people want to play it? Because it's similar to Dark Souls, and people know it. Okay, but what about the people who don't know Dark Souls? What about them? What's going to make them want to play this game? The fact that it's a PS4 exclusive. Oh, PS4 exclusive? Why did you just say so? Watching people argue over exclusives is my favorite pastime. Yeah, that's the whole marketing aspect right there. So, what's the game about? Well, like I said, it's pretty out there. I'm sure it's not that bad. Alright, if you say so, I had to write all this down, so I'm gonna have to read it to you. Hold on. Ah, there it is. <laughs> So the player character, a, a hunter, sees that, you know, you're being operated on by an old man. And the man explains like a blood transfusion to treat a condition called pale blood. Where this, this this big beast reaches out for you and it just completely bursts into flames. You, you find a lamp which teleports you to what is called the hunter's dream. Where you meet a, an NPC named Garum. You travel to Central Yarnum, where another character tells you that you have to seek out the healing church. Father Gasca, Gascon... Father G tries to kill the player, you have to defeat three enemies known as the Shadow of Yarnum, Realization, who supposedly bore Murgo, the source of the nightmare, to build a vessel for the Great One known as the One Reborn. So after he said the game was initiated where the hunter returns to the hunter's dream and Gurnum offers the player a way out. Uh, Sir? Uh, wow. Just, wow. I told you. What possessed you to come up with this? Well, see, I've been going through some dark times lately, so I decided to put all my evil, dark, demonic thoughts into a video game. Well, just hearing the story alone gives me the creeps. Even the part about the baby. Yeah, my neighbors had a baby during my dark times, and it kept crying, so, you know, I had to make it stop. What? What? I'm mortified. Well, look, the baby was getting on my nerves, all right? If I had to call my neighbors and ask it to calm it down, then I would have never got any work done. Oh, I thought you did something bad. Oh, no, I'm not a monster. So what's the gameplay like? Well, I must say, this game will be really, really, really hard. How difficult is it? Well, imagine playing a video game blindfolded with your hands tied behind your back and no controller and no TV. That makes no sense. My point exactly. But I still feel like people will love this game for some reason. Honestly, I don't doubt it. PlayStation exclusive will be the sole argument between Xbox and PlayStation fanboys. So throughout the game, you find these lanterns that are pretty much respawn points and fast travel accesses. Well, that's cool. Sounds like a pretty big map. It'll be cool to travel from lantern to lantern. Actually, you travel from lantern to the hunter's dream and back to another lantern. Actually, it'll be more beneficial just to walk because every time you use a lantern, enemies respawn. You disgust me. And you can purchase left-handed and right-handed weapons, and you can also buy outfits that have their own beneficial attributes. And what's the form of currency? They're called blood echoes that you get from defeating enemies. But if you die, you lose them. As if this game couldn't be more challenging. And there's no map, no curses, crosshairs, markers, or any type of indicators of where you're supposed to go. You pretty much just roam around aimlessly until you find people and stuff. I stay corrected. But the combat is going to be pretty fun. I mean, after you level up so that way you don't die in one hit. Can you at least block? No, but you can dodge. Oh boy, what are you going to do? Make the sprint, dodge, and jump function all the same button? That won't complicate things at all. Oh, you know what? That's a great idea. No, no. I was joking. And if you don't think things are complicated enough, wait until you fight the bosses. Well, what happens in a boss fight? Well, almost every boss is almost 5 to 10 times your size, 20 times your health, and 100 times your strength. You probably will die in one hit. And why are you doing this to people? Well, because gamers will rage and break their controllers, making them buy a new ones, which gives PlayStation money, which means we get money. You know, at first I was like, this guy's crazy. But then I was like, he's not. 
Because monies. There is one more thing to the story, though. There's more to the story? At the end of the game, the first hunter, Garum. The old guy from the beginning? Right. Okay, just making sure because you know this game makes zero sense. Oh, trust me, I get it. So after Garum offers you a way out, you get to choose your destiny. And depending on your answer, you get three different endings. And are any of them significant to any potential sequels? I don't know yet. Then why even do it? Multiple endings means multiple playthroughs. Why would anyone want to go through that twice? Who knows and who cares? They will. You're not wrong. And that's pretty much it, except for the multiplayer, which is pretty much pointless and stupid and dumb. Then why even ha- Never mind, who cares? You're catching on. Well, as much as I think people will really respond to this game, uh, and I, you know, want to see people struggle and rage quit, there's still not enough to make me seal the deal. Did I mention we're working on an expansion pack with new stories, locations, and weapons that people will buy after the game's been released? Huh. And just like that, monies. It with these on the beat. Oh, I completely agree, sir. PlayStation exclusives will pretty much be the only reason why people will think PlayStation is better than Xbox. Oh, hi. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Make sure that you like it and share it and click all the beautiful buttons and stuff and junk. And also make sure that you put in the comments letting us know what games we should do next. And for some streaming content, make sure that you follow Hapless Lucky and Games and More on Facebook and Twitch. And we'll see you next time. So yeah, other than PlayStation exclusive, there's really no valid reason as to why PlayStation is superior.